Since we don't want to get caught, we plan ahead. Are we crazy or what? We plan ahead. Are we crazy or what? Hi, I'm Jennifer with Are We Crazy or What? I wanted to show you a few fermenting jar options. All these jars contain an airlock for an added layer of protection. Years ago, people who fermented didn't have airlocks. They fermented in huge ceramic crocks. And some people still prefer to use those huge crocks. They're very expensive. And since they typically don't have an airlock, there is more chance for mold and other yucky things to get into your ferment. Airlocks allow the fermenting gases to escape while not letting any outside air in, keeping the fermenting environment balanced. Here are four different setups using airlocks and jars. Three of these setups use mason jars, and one uses a phyto jar. Let's look at the phyto jar first. These jars are very expensive, probably because they are imported from Italy. I bought this fermenting kit, these things here, separate from the jars. The lid will fit on all of the sizes, the different sizes. This is the Fido jar setup. We purchased the kit separately from the Fido jar. The kit comes with a fermenting lid. It's a pre-drilled lid. And then it comes with a weight to keep your vegetables under the brine. It comes with a large airlock for your main ferment. It also comes with a smaller airlock for after you move it to cold storage. This helps uh, get, give you some more room in the fridge. And also, it comes with this little stopper, and that just goes right in the lid like that. And that helps um, when you're transporting it, especially in the car. And this particular kit also comes with a package of mineral salt. So this kit is, the kit and the jar itself, the lid, is really nice and heavy. It's great quality, but it's just too expensive. This kit right here was $30. And then the jar started around 12 and go up 15, 20, 25, depending on the size. In order to put this kit together, what you're gonna want to do is remove the non-fermenting lid that came with the jar and replace it with the fermenting lid from your kit, like so. And go ahead and place it back on the jar. And then place the gasket. This gasket came with the Fido jar, and that helps you get a good seal for your ferment. Go ahead and place it on. Then you're gonna wanna take the weight and put it in there to keep your vegetables under the brine. Go ahead and latch it. And then take your airlock and place it right on the lid, right in the lid. And then you'll want to remove this cap and place water to about right there. So that will keep the outside air uh, out of your ferment. And then you place the lid like so. And you're ready to let that set on the counter uh, and ferment. Next, let's look at a Tattler lid setup. You can buy the Tattler lids pre-drilled from a third party, but Tattler does not sell them with a hole in them. But it's easy enough to drill a hole and place a grommet in them to make the airlock airtight. Here's how. First, you'll clamp your lid down to a board that you can drill into. You don't want to drill into your countertop. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, drill a hole near the center of the lid. You don't have to be exact. Next, use a 1 half inch drill bit to widen the hole you just created. Unclamp your lid and wipe off any plastic shards with your finger. Press the grommet into the hole. This is the Tatler lid setup. You can see we have the lid that we just drilled here. And then we have a weight. This weight looks a little different than the Fido jar setup weight. It's flatter. Then we have a standard airlock. Then here I'm using just a um, pint wide mouth jar. You could use a regular mouth jar if you wanted to. I just think vegetables are a little easier to get in and out with a wide mouth jar. Now these things are reasonably priced if you price them out individually. 
However, all of these things were, except for, well, even the mason jar, except for the airlock, was actually purchased as a set. So the startup cost is quite a bit more. So to actually go ahead and put this set up together, you're going to place your weight in there to keep your vegetables under the brine. And then you're just going to put the lid in just like you would a standard mason jar and screw on the the ring and then go ahead and put your airlock right in there and you would go ahead and fill this to about here with water to keep the outside air from getting into your ferment then you're ready to put it on the counter to leave it ferment. Next is the recap setup. These lids are kind of neat because they have multiple uses. Here we have the recap setup and this right here is a recap lid and this is multi-purpose. You can put it on a mason jar and use it as a drinking bottle or something like that um, but we're going to use it for fermenting today. I have a standard airlock. I have a stopper that fits in the hole of the lid and then I also have a weight and all of these things were purchased separately um, and they're reasonably priced uh, separately uh, the recap lid is a little expensive and even though it's multi-purpose it's plastic and so um, it's not going to last forever so in order to put this setup together you're going to put your weight in to keep the vegetables under the brine go ahead and screw the the top on the recap top get it screwed on there and then you're going to go ahead and put your stopper in here and then go ahead and put the airlock on like so then you're going to fill your airlock to about there with water you can take this cap off Fill it up to about there and then replace your cap. Then you're ready to let it sit on the counter and ferment. Last but not least is a setup by a new company called Ferment Tools. This is the Ferment Tool Kit here. It comes with a metal stainless steel lid. Notice there's no grommet there. Um, it comes with a gasket. It comes with a nice heavy weight. Um, these, this one's a little bit bigger than the ones I used with the Tatler lid setup and the recap setup. Uh, comes with a stopper and a standard airlock. And then this comes with a nice big bag of uh, mineral salt. And then there's also a little bag to keep your glass weight in so it doesn't get damaged. So. What you'll need with this kit is a mason jar. It does not come with a jar. It just fits with a standard wide mouth mason jar. And this is really designed for a quart size, but I only had two heads of cabbage for this video, so I went with a pint size, a wide mouth pint size. So this entire kit was around $20, so I think that was pretty reasonable. You can just buy just the one kit if you want to try it out and see if you like it. So in order to put this kit together, what you're going to do is go ahead and put your weight in. That keeps the vegetables under the brine while the ferment is going on. Then you're going to go ahead and place the lid on. Then your ring from your mason jar. Then go ahead and put your stopper in. And you can fit your airlock right in there. Then you will take this top off and fill this airlock to about here with water that will keep the um, outside air from getting into your ferment. Then go ahead and replace this lid and then it's ready to set on the counter and ferment to make sauerkraut. You can probably guess which setup I like best. The first three are expensive, even if you choose the Tatler lid setup and drill your own holes. You still have to purchase the airlock, the wheat, and the grommets. 
All that adds up to almost twice what you would pay for the ferment tool setup. The fire jars are just too expensive, and if you were to attempt to drill your own holes, it would take specialized equipment and could be dangerous if you don't know how to drill glass. They are three to four times more expensive than the ferment tool setup. Even though the recaps are multi-purpose tops, they are still too expensive because as I said before, you have to buy the other items in a set. Also, the recaps are plastic, which means they won't last forever. I found the Ferment Tools Kit the easiest and most economical. I hope this comparison helps you decide which setup is best for your fermenting. Be sure to visit my blog, arewecrazyorwhat.net, to get this sauerkraut recipe if you're viewing this on YouTube. Take care until we talk again.